Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to Tuesday's edition of the DCEU Daily, a very, very special edition. Of course, they're all special edi editions. I'm here, you're here, we're talking about the DCEU, we're talking about DC. Happy Wonder Woman Day, everyone. So happy, so excited to bring to you the news that you hopefully already know that December the 8th, um, Patty Jenkins will bring us the first trailer for Wonder Woman 1984, a film I've already seen via being honoured with being able to see the test screening. So Wonder Woman Day, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman is a very, very important, special character. And we're just going to be talking about her history, um, her past, her present, and really then talk about her in live action, in the TV show, and of course, in films. So Wonder Woman was created, and let me get his name right, by William Moulton Marston, who also invented the lie detector. Now, I don't think he was the original inventor for the lie detector, but he created um, his own method of um, lie detecting. It was a, a kind of apparatus. Now, what's interesting, of course, is Wonder Woman's got her whip or whatever you want to call it. Um, so when it touches someone, it forces them to tell the truth. So he implemented his lie detector on Wonder Woman. Now, I'm reading this because I'm not an expert on Wonder Woman. Obviously, I love her. I've read her. I've watched the TV show. I've watched... Actually, Wonder Woman Bloodline is something that um, I have got in my possession and I will be watching very soon and reviewing. So I'm very excited about that. But Wonder Woman was created by William Moulton Marston in 1941. Wonder Woman made her debut in All Star Comics at the end of 1941 on the cover of a new comic book sensation. Comics at the beginning of 1942, drawn by artist named Harry G. Peter. So Wonder Woman's had a very, very interesting history. A lot of people see her as a feminist icon. But one of the things that, for me, that doesn't define Wonder Woman is her femininity, is her, the fact that she's a female. For me, when, when I read Wonder Woman or when I saw the TV show or when I watched the Wonder Woman movie starring Gal Gadot and directed by the wonderful Patty Jenkins, I never saw her femininity. I never saw the fact that she's a woman. That's the furthest thing on my mind. It's not the fact that I don't know she's a woman, but that is such, it's just not important. Her gender's not important. Now, in, in this era of identity politics, that's hard for a lot of people to believe. Now, a lot of men be began reading Wonder Woman, and William Walter Marston was a very interesting character. You would imagine him being kind of, kind of a new age feminist back, back then, all those years ago, um, in 1941. But in fact, not only did he have a wife, he had a mistress, and they both lived with him. Yes, yeah, so in these days, he would be called a toxic male, wouldn't he? But um, his wife was fine with it, and obviously his mistress was fine with him. Um, but he really wanted DC to create a, a female hero. And the female heroes weren't anywhere to be seen back then. So at first, she, her outfit was very, very revealing. You could see her cleavage. And I think it was only years afterwards where she became this kick-ass character. But even in the Wonder Woman TV show, when she was running about, you could see her breasts wobbling up and down. It was... Probably one of the reasons, as a young guy, I was watching it. I'm, I'm going to confess that. Um, but in the comics later on, she became a great character, part of the Justice League, one of the founding members of the Justice League as well. Um, so she's such a fascinating character in the sense that she, even though you would think of her as a flagship for equality, feminism, and she, of course, a lot of people, a lot of girls, a lot of women now see her as a feminist icon, and that's great, by the way. That's wonderful. But to me, she's so much more than that. She's a person rather than a woman, and she's kind of the chosen one. You know, she was, um, you know, Zeus, um, she was made of clay from Zeus, is it, right? Um, you know, um, Wonder Woman's um, mother, um, Apollita, didn't give birth to Diana. 
so they all live on this island, Fimiskira, which we all know. Um, and I think the film did a good job with the way they did that, by the way. Um, and she leaves the island. She meets Steve Trevor. And, and she goes on this amazing adventure. It's, I suppose it's like someone leaving the Earth and going to another planet. It's a journey of discovery for Diana. But she leaves because she believes man still deserves to be saved. Now, in the essence of um, Hippolyta, she doesn't believe that. She believes man. And when I say man, she's talking about humanity, not men in general. But that's how they, and in the film, that's how they address humanity as man. They're not saying we're going to save men and let women die. And I think sometimes people take things literally these days and get very, very easily offended. So, as I say, a really, really fascinating character. So then, I mean, when we did get this film, um, I think that it was interesting timing because I'm surprised we never had a Wonder Woman film. Uh, Joss Whedon was going to do a, a Wonder Woman film years ago. I know Joss Whedon is poison to a lot of DCEU fans right now. Talented man, but he didn't really have the opportunity to make his own Justice League movie. So he was under pressure, like everyone at Warner Brothers at the time, and they did something stupid. Um, but ultimately, this whoever came up with the idea, and I think it was Zack Snyder, was Zack Snyder's idea to put Patty Jenkins in charge. And I think Patty Jenkins, I'm not sure if I'm right, but didn't she direct an episode or so of Game of Thrones? Or was that there was a director before her? And there was creative differences and everyone was going, here we go again. But Patty Jenkins turned out to be such a refreshing element to the DCEU because Wonder Woman came after, was it Suicide Squad? So, you know, Batman v Superman and um, Suicide Squad were rejected by critics and the mainstream audience and media. So Wonder Woman was a breath of fresh air. Now, Wonder Woman's success is very, very interesting. Some people thought it was just because it was a female lead, but I don't think so. This is one of the best films, um, best superhero films I've ever seen. I would put it up there with Superman the movie and my, one of my personal favourites, Man of Steel, and BVS, by the way. This is a really, really good film. It deals with a lot of touchy issues very intelligently. This could have been another Captain Marvel where she stands there and she hisses at men and she beats a bunch of men up. But this film is so intelligent. Instead of dividing men and women, instead of creating a toxic narrative, we and I've discussed this with you guys here on, on Big Mouth and the DCEU Daily before. She meets Steve Trevor. She falls in love with him. She goes off. Um, she, she, she believes he's a good man. And she wants him to show her humanity. And he, she, she will, in the film, it's amazing because she refuses to just stay on the island. She's safe on the island. She doesn't want safety. She believes man deserves to be saved. She's gonna. She's not going to let innocent people die, as she tells her mother, Hippolyta, right? So she leaves the comfort of the island and goes on this amazing adventure, right? And she's, she's looking for Ares, right, who is the god of war. And it is absolutely brilliant how they do this. I like the bit when she walks into the office of all the kind of male generals or soldiers, and they're all looking at her. That's a great way. That's a non-toxic way to deal with the fact that, you know, Diana, Wonder Woman, is in a man's world at that moment. And they actually start listening to her and respecting her opinion, which is brilliant, which is absolutely brilliant. But And, and I'll go back to kind of Steve Trevor's team he puts together, who are all men. The way she converses with those men listens to their problems, their history, their stories, is beautiful. And Wonder Woman has an empathy with these men. She she kind of feels their pain. She feels the world that they're in. And they be, I suppose they become a team. They become friends. Now, when you look at Captain Marvel and the kind of controversy around that film and Brie Larson's comment, that film, the film not so much, but Brie Larson's comments are all about dividing men and women and Wonder Woman and Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins made Wonder Woman whether it was the build-up of the film and what they had to say about the film or the film itself it was about uniting men and women and this is the thing 
And when I talk about um, gender equality or representation, it should be about uniting. It should be about fairness. It should be giving everyone a crack of the whip. Because otherwise, if you go on the narrative that Brie Larson did, it's about revenge and not equality. And I speak a lot about that. And this is what's so wonderful about this film. It celebrates humanity. It celebrates men and women. And what it does and what it doesn't do is say, here's women. Women are better than men. Stand aside, men. You've had your time dominating humanity. It's our turn. It's not about that. It's about love. It's about Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot seeing young boys dressed as Wonder Woman and put, posting pictures on Instagram and Twitter. It was a beautiful time. And, you know, when that film was released and, you know, when the publicity started, there was so much toxicity towards the DCU, the DCEU versus the MCU and all that nonsense. This was about love. This film's about acceptance. This is about putting love over hate. We see that when Diana's fighting Ares. When she sees Steve Trevor's plane explode, she's angry. But then she finds her heart. Then she finds love. It's a beautiful film. Gal is a wonderful Diana Prince, a.k.a. Wonder Woman. And what Patty Jenkins did was so, so soulful, so full of love, so full. It's a journey. You know, when you do these superhero movies and when you watch them, as we do, you want to see the character go on a journey. It's like Superman the movie. He starts off on Smallville which is a different world. It's a different world. Again, a bit like Diana, uh, Smallville is his island. It's his, you know, it's his fantasy island, if you like. He's safe there. But he tells his mum, I have to leave. And he, he, he creates the fortress with the help of jor and the crystal. And then he moves to Metropolis because he knows that's where he's needed. And that's not where he's safe, but he's not going to be safe there. Everyone's always going to try and take him down and the people that he loves. And this is the same as Wonder Woman. There are a lot of kind of um, comparisons you can make between Wonder Woman and Superman. And I think they're both as relatable as each other. I think that what Patty Jenkins did and Gal, they made this character so relatable. Even in Justice League, with all the problems that film had, I think if you ignore um, Barry laying on top of Diana, that was ridiculous, or the upskirt, the disgusting upskirt shots that... Joss Whedon did, and I hope he didn't re do that on purpose because that was so sloppy. I'm going to forgive him and say it was because Sujihara was pressuring him to do these reshoots very quickly because that's not how you do it. That's not how you shoot a lady. Um, and it, isn't it, Jeff, is it Jeffrey Unsworth who um, said to Margot Kidder, a.k.a. Lois Lane on Superman the movie, quiet, I'm lighting the lady. You respect the opposite sex. Um, you respect their strength. You respect their femininity. And, you know, this is what you should be doing. And what Joss Whedon did with some of that was ridiculous. But if you take away all that, actually, Wonder Woman was very relatable. Her relationship with Bruce, the dynamic with Bruce, her empathy towards Bruce, even though he was being a bit of a dick to her at times, that really, really worked. And I think if we're going to have more and more female leads, which we want, we want fairness and equality. We want to make them great characters. We, we, we want them to go on a journey rather than being these angry creatures who, for some reason, hate men. Hate is the weapon of the extreme left. Hate is the extreme weapon of the extreme right. I don't want the extreme right or the extreme left making films. I want people making films, telling stories. I want people to grab hold of me, filmmakers to grab hold of me, and take me to another world. Um, so basically, December the 8th, we will be seeing the first Wonder Woman trailer. And you guys will get your first look at this film. This is a very, very different superhero movie. As I said, I saw the test screening. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be surprised. I think you're going to be happy. I don't think, I mean, you never know with a fandom these days. It's just so toxic out there, isn't it? Um, I liked what I saw. I was shocked by um, what I saw. What surprised me the most was the kind of the gambles, the gambles that Patty and Jeff Johns took, who absolutely co-wrote this film with Patty Jenkins. I think what this film is, is you can tell that Jeff Johns, a comic book legend, wrote this film. No matter what you think of his involvement when he was running the DCEU, he's a great storyteller. And him and Patty have written a great 
movie Wonder Woman 1984 is going to touch your heart. It's going to touch your soul. Um, there's menace in it. Look, there's this is a this is a. I mean, they're not calling this a sequel. I understand by seeing the film why they're not calling it a sequel. But you're going to be very surprised by this film and excited. What are you going to be doing? Comment down below on this Wonder Woman day. A great character and her day absolutely should be celebrated. Please, you can continue the conversation. Follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Um, please like, share and subscribe. Please, if you like the videos, please like them. I don't get many, many likes and I'm not getting noticed on YouTube. The rules have changed to make, make it suit the bigger companies. So a little YouTuber like me needs your support. So if you love me, show me the love.